Hi guys, welcome to Pixel Affair. It's Kobe here. So in today's video, we are going to try and see if we can do a looping version of this original tutorial I posted um, earlier. So I posted this tutorial on showing how to get this animation that let me actually play it, right? And I mean, you can actually watch it and see uh, everything, how everything was done. But in the comment section, someone was actually asking if it's possible for us to do a seamless uh, loop right so that when it's getting to the end of the frame the end poses will sort of uh, dissolve for it to continue moving uh, seamlessly and i tried my hands on it so let's see how we will do that so i already have my mixamo animation which i've actually baked into alembic and if you don't understand all this process you can actually watch the first video and i explain how all of this was done right so if i hit play you can see it's playing and doing everything what i've actually also done is that i've actually reduced the poly counts and i've baked it so that you know it'll be faster now let's go ahead and do the other processes right so all of this everything i'm doing here was explained in the previous video so you probably might have to watch it if you don't get anything i do here right so now let's go ahead and create our other frame so what i'll do is i'll come into my clone object a uh, mograph object and i'll choose clone and I'll make this a child of the clone, right? I'll change the mode, select the clone, and change the mode from um, grid to the radial, and I'll make push it outside, maybe minus 140, right? So that um, it's all looking outside. And then I'll create a second copy of this uh, Mixamo animation. So I'll hold control, click and drag to create another copy. And I'll name this um, um, 200 because I'm going to create 200 copies of this um, animation. You can create like the whole frame ends, um, the whole animation ends at 265, right? This whole animation plays in 265 frames. So, but if you want, you can do 100, 265 or whatever frames you want, depending on how much you think is enough. In this case, I'll probably do 200. So I'll select the clone and I'll increase the count to. 200 right and i'll change the clones you can see the mode here is set to iterate i'll change it to um blend right and now i'll select the clone and um, the alembic file which i've named 200 and come down to the alembic settings here and i'll change the offset to the 200 like the last frame which is 260 by 265 Oh, actually, it should be minus 265, not 265 here. So, minus 265. So, now we have all the frames and everything in here, right? The next thing is to select our clone and come to our object tab and choose um, current state to object, right? And now I can see it's created another copy with all of them being separated from each other. So, now I'll just disable the clone and I'll hide it for now. And now we have all of these um, objects, individual um, poses created, right? So this is what we want. Now the next thing I'll do is I'll come into my MoGraph menu and I'll choose a fracture. I'll make this clone null that we've created, the child of the fracture object, right? Let's drag it down. And I'll select the null, come to my um, object and I'll say delete without children. So I'll choose delete without children. So all of them will be an individual nose um, object under the fracture object right and now we can use our cloner then um, our fields to affect it so i'll select the fracture i'll come to my effectors and i'll choose plane effector you can see it's moving it up but you don't want to move it up so i'll come into the parameters i don't want position i want to affect its visibility so i'll come down and choose visibility and now you are going to use field to control when it shows up right so now I'll come into the Fields tab and I'm going to choose Radial, right? So now this is what we are going to do. With the Radial, you can see if I start playing with it, you can see now that's popping up and going off. And that's what we are going to use to basically control our, frame, our poses to come on one by one, right? And it begins to look like it's actually moving. So now with my Radial and everything set, let's go ahead and set our camera, right? So I'll create a camera. And that's going to be where um, our angle camera angle. So I'll select the camera, make sure I'm, I've clicked on this to look in the camera. And I'll come into my coordinates and reset 
um, rotation everything to zero zero and I'll adjust the Y somewhere here so let's assume this is our camera angle and we are cool with the camera now the thing with the um, looping animation is that how your animation starts should be the same way it ends or basically your end frame should be the same as your um, starting frame right so to do that we are going to use the radia to set where like to set the angle in fact let me get out of the camera and now select the radia come into the fields and now adjust the start angle to uh, somewhere like here I'll, now let's go back into the camera again and let's ch check the offset i'll set the offset to like say 90 All right and now and adjust it a bit more um oh, let's see i'm over here i'm over here oh actually it should be Oh, actually, I'm not adjusting the start, uh, start angle. I'll check. So let's is this one rather I'm looking for. So I'll set this one to 360, the end angle, and I'll set the start angle to something like, let's say this, right? In fact, I can even offset it a little bit more, right? And now this is how we want like our animations to start, right? After we are done with this, we are basically done. To set the looping animation so all i have to do is to start select the fracture object itself and because this is radial it's quite easy so i select the fracture object itself come into my coordinates and now set a keyframe on the h right and now my frame rate i've increased it to like 400 but on frame let's say 200 let me actually make it 200 or not 200 right and at frame at the last frame i'll rotate it 360 so 360 right and if i hit play see what's happening you know right to play get to the end and continue again so like let's actually make our keyframe um animation linear so i'll click on this icon here or i can simply come to my window and um, timeline do shit and it will still do the same thing right so i'll select the fracture and I'll make sure I change it from spline and I'll click on this one to make it linear. So now if I hit play, let's see how the whole thing goes. You can see it plays and it continues like that, right? So basically, that's all you have to do. Make sure you set the radius of your uh, radial field how you want it and everything. And then you hit play. Uh, you would animate the rotation of your fracture object right and now it's done so let's for instance let me actually show you a cool thing if i select the radial and come to the fields and make this one to like make it small to like say yeah 358 and it hits play you can see it looks like the animation playing itself but what's actually doing is that it's revealing each and every pose individually but it makes it look like it's the animation which is basically plain and this is really really cool right so if like not for this tutorial i'm showing you probably might think it's the whole animation plain on its own but it is just every individual frames revealing one by one so by so doing you can actually start with let's say this one set a keyframe here and i frame 200 and um, let's bring it down to something like this All right let's make it like that Set a keyframe, in fact, and I'll increase all of these to um, 400 frames. So 400, right? And now from 400, I'll bring, I'll take it back to the 380 again. Um, um, three, five, eight again. We just left one. So our start frame is the same as our end frame. But you can see from frame 200 going, the rotation of our move a fracture object doesn't happen. So we'll go into our window timeline again. I'll select the fracture object and I'll come into the attribute. You can see after, before and after. Let's change the after from constant to continue. And because it's a linear keyframe, it will continue forever and play whenever um, there is some frames. And then I'll select my radial field. I'll change it from spline to um, linear as well. And then I'll go back. So if I hit play now, can see 
everything will play and review and combines and now goes back the whole thing forms and continues from there again right so yeah if there's something that you want right you can actually do but then it's because everything comes back and form it makes it a little bit um, obvious somehow like that it's starting again so probably what you can probably do is to you don't have to start with just one animation probably some couple of animations so maybe i'll select the radio and i'll adjust it a bit so that let's see some few frames starts so that's 348 make sure it's set to 348 again all right and now that one would probably help that would to not make it that obvious but then yeah it still probably will be because um but still the whole animation and everything loops right so it's cool if you want to do something with like looping animation and everything um this is one of the ways that you can actually do it um so yeah i hope this was useful and you've learned some cool tricks and cool techniques in here um thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one